happy Valentine's Day. We've got a special Valentine's Day Science with Sarah plan. We are with these awesome third graders at Lamar Elementary. We're gonna be making candy catapults. And we say good Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning and happy Valentine's Day. It is Wednesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to talk to Sarah in just a minute. You could see uh, the sign in the background was super cute. It says, we love science. We do love science, so we're going to have science with Sarah coming up later in the newscast. Let's chat about some of your favorite romantic comedies, and they're very popular. And we're going to focus on, on Texas's favorite com uh, according to a new study conducted by Jeff Bet, which is an online casino. <laughs> Interesting. So Texas's top 10 favorite rom-coms. Number one, 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, okay. Number two, Crazy Stupid Love. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one Steve too. Carell. Uh, yeah, Steve Carell. I don't remember 13 going on 30. I had to look it up. Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I remember the, the actor and actors. I just don't right. remember the movie itself. Oh. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, number four is My Big Fat Greek Wedding, which Aww. came back in 2002. It seems like it wasn't oh, that wow. long ago. Oh, my goodness. And then here's another one I didn't know that I wasn't familiar with the title, but I had to look up the actors and I, I recognized them. This is 500 Days of Summer starring... Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, that one was pretty good. It was, it was interesting. I know that's one of Justin's favorites, too. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then we have <laughs> When Harry Met Sally coming yeah. in at number six here in Texas. And here's my type of movie, number seven, Pretty in Pink. Love that one. The classic Breakfast at Tiffany's in 1961. And <laughs> number nine was pretty funny, Wedding Crashers. Yeah, you killed two birds with one yeah. stone there. For Definitely sure. a comedy in the romantic comedy category. And finally, we've got 16 Candles, which came out way back in Aww. 1984. I remember when that came out like it was yesterday. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, 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 loved, I loved that movie. And I was like, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yes, we've got our red on here. And so does Justin. Good morning. I do. Good morning to you. I, uh, I said this, I think it was a week or so ago. Uh, my favorite rom-com, I think The Proposal. The Ryan Reynolds, yes. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. That one made me laugh. It's, it's, yeah, got, I love that one. You got Betty White in there. It's, it's, She's uh, one of the best parts of that movie is Betty she White. Is. She is. Plus, yeah. you look like Ryan Reynolds. It's got to oh, be your movie. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know. Uh, but yes, uh, that, that's my favorite one. And guys, I'm going to set the mood here real quick. Huh? Nice. Oh, what I did? Uh, yeah, is that a table for one or two? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the chocolate. There it is. Uh, don't forget to guess for one for now, Mark. Uh, 64 uh, and cloudy today. That's what we're thinking for Valentine's Day. So if you have plans this evening, that's what you can expect. Not a bad day. We're not seeing any rain, but it will be cloudy. All right, let's look at the satellite picture. Uh, we've got some clouds rolling in, and uh, it was sunny earlier. Not anymore. 51 degrees at the airport, 50 Hondo, 44 in Kerrville, 53 in Pleasanton, 53 in Kennedy, 57 in Cloudy out there in Del Rio. A little closer look, we're still in the low 50s and 40s. So with these clouds rolling in, it's going to be hard for us to warm up, right? So temperatures are going to be uh, not moving up as fast as they were yesterday. Here's a look at the weather headlines. Rain Friday. Best odds are going to be along and south of I-10. We're going to talk more about how it's uh, going to set up because the highest rainfall totals, and we could see some decent numbers, are going to be south of San Antonio. So we'll see a wide range of rainfall depending on where you live. And the weekend. We can't forget about the weekend. Windy and cold on Saturday. We want to let you know that wind chill values could be in the 30s and 40s. More on that in just a bit. Let's get over to uh, our Casanova over there. RJ, how you doing, man? Cupid, Casanova. Wow, the meteorologist <laughs> really gave me a lot of love today. Literally love. All right, yeah, you know what? Back to you too, Justin. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds all the way, man. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> A spitting image, a doppelganger. All right, guys, taking a quick look here at Trans Guide Traffic Cameras. Loop 410, Callahan Road. We have a crash here that is causing a bit of a delay as, as Trans Guide actually zooms in and kind of gives us a better idea of what we're looking at here on the uh, northwest side. And you see there that we have 
multiple vehicles involved in this crash and hopefully these individuals are okay out there. Let's show you the maps here really quick and see exactly what we're looking at. Again, eastbound lanes of Loop 410 at Callahan Road. So it's actually a little bit before Callahan. So something to keep in mind if you are headed out right now in that part of the town, especially if you are headed up to Babcock Road and also all the way up to I-10 in that direction there. Want to let you know about a couple other things that we're following right now. I-10 westbound at Woodlawn Avenue, a little bit closer to that downtown area, northwest of downtown, but still causing a little bit of delays in that area there. Westbound I-10 at Woodlawn in the, uh, again, northwest of downtown and uh, northeast here, Loop 410 eastbound at Pern Vital Road. We have a stalled vehicle that's causing some backup here, especially for our drivers that are headed up to 35 and 410. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Again, we've had a pretty busy Pretty busy day in general and morning. A lot of people are out on the roads. Obviously, people are going to be out and about for lunch and also later on for dinner. So just make sure you stay safe out there and make sure that uh, that you have a good time. And happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Same to you, RJ. It is also Ash Wednesday. So a very busy Wednesday. Yes. Uh, here's today's 9 and 9. For the first time in 150 years, a historic impeachment of a sitting cabinet member. Yesterday, the Republican-led House voted to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas over his handling of the southern border. It comes after a failed effort by Republicans last week, but the effort is expected to die in the Democratic-led Senate. They are expected to receive the articles of impeachment from the House later this month. Five people were injured after a car crashed into an emergency room in North Austin yesterday evening. The driver died from injuries due to the crash. Austin police say this does not appear to be an intentional act. The St. David's ER will be closed until further notice, but operations outside the emergency department were not affected. Americans are paying the price for rising inflation or just about everything from the grocery store to housing and transportation. Prices were 3.1% higher last month compared to a year ago, which was worse than analysts expected. That means we shouldn't expect the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates anytime soon. Eating out is going to cost you more. The price of food at restaurants is up 5% year over year. That is significantly more than grocery prices, which are up just 1% by comparison. This is a complete reversal from last year where it was cheaper to dine out. The shift could be attributed to higher pay for food service employees. Some special Valentine's Day editions of popular candies appear to be priced higher than about the same amount of their regular versions. They include Haribo, Sour Patch Kids, and Jolly Ranchers. One retail expert says there could be a good reason for such holiday markups because it can be more costly to make seasonal items since they're for a limited sales period and made in limited quantities. Catching a ride or getting some food delivered might be a little tougher today. Drivers for Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash are picking Valentine's Day to protest for better pay. Thousands of drivers are expected to take part. For the first time in 30 years, flight attendants at Alaska Airlines have voted to authorize a strike. An actual walkout is unlikely, though, because of rules governing airline workers. The Association of Flight Attendants says some members of cabin crews haven't seen raises in five years. Walmart may be looking to jump into the TV business. It's in talks to buy TV maker Vizio. That's a best-selling brand at Walmart stores. The deal could be worth more than $2 billion. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, the 40-day period of prayer, penance, and fasting that leads up to Easter. Now, during Ash Wednesday services, Christians get marked with ashes on their forehead, usually in the shape of a cross. Many Christians give up something like television or alcohol during Lent as a modern form of fasting. The tradition has been around since the 5th to the 9th century. And that's today's 9 at 9. If you have driven along I-35 on the northeast side, you may have come across some potholes. That's right. A road improvement project there seems to have left some drivers in need of work on their cars. So they say the project has caused damage to their vehicles. As Katrina Weber reports, they're now wondering who will pay for those repairs. It started right there. And as you can see, it's a little pebble. And look, it's all the way here. A runaway crack in her windshield has Patricia Richardson herself just about at the breaking point. It's the second one for her on two different cars. $535, that's for that one. And here's for my rental car. 
$550. This is one price of progress she doesn't want to pay. She says road construction, a project on Interstate 35 between Loops 410 and 1604, is making her drive to work dangerous. Every morning as pebbles hit in my car, I feel like gunshots hit me. We shot this video last week during a bumpy drive along 35. Richardson believes debris from it has been doing her in. Other drivers have complained about damaged wheels and rims. The construction is being done by a contractor hired by TxDOT. I spent the better part of a week emailing, texting, and even calling, trying to get an interview with TxDOT. Instead, at the last minute, I got a written statement saying, among other things, that the agency has already repaired some of the rough areas of the road and was still working to identify and fix others. After that email, we went back and did notice patched up spots that seemed to make the ride feel a bit smoother. Whether it feels safer to Richardson remains to be seen. Someone else has to be accountable for the, uh, for the danger that they're putting us in. As for the damage, accountability could be on the contractor. TxDOT says drivers can submit claims for repairs and it will pass them along to that company. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina did tell us that some improvements have been made to some of those potholes, but the work isn't completely done. And at this point, there's no word on how long it's going to take to process any damage claims. So TxDOT told us it can't speak on behalf of the contractor. The contractor, meanwhile, directed us back to TxDOT for any information. So Katrina has been going back and forth a lot. But if you need to file a claim, there is a link for that. Uh, on this story on our website at kset.com. And we're going to be following up on this story, we promise. Right now, 909.53 degrees. Let's go back out there with science with Sarah. This is at Lamar Elementary. There's that sign I'm talking about right there where it says, Welcome Sarah and David, and we love science. We're going to check in with them very soon. And if you're looking to celebrate Black History Month, there's a new exhibit capturing everyday life and emotions. Hear more about these art pieces and from the artist next. This Best of Mutton Busted, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Welcome back. Just about 914, a San Antonio artist who created a sculpture at Martin Luther King Park is showcasing his art in a new exhibit for Black History Month. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from San Antonio College to tell us more about the exhibit called Expressions of Identity, African American Portraits. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Yeah, we met Caldrick Dow back in 2022 when he did that sculpture at the park. And this morning, he is celebrating Black History Month here at San Antonio College with this new exhibit that opens tomorrow. But here on KSAT, we are getting a sneak peek. And we have the artist himself, Caldrick, joining us. Good morning, Caldrick. Tell me, what does Black History Month mean to you? Uh, Black History Month for me is a kind of a focus on, you know, black talents and, and black arts. Uh, you know, not too long ago, we weren't able to really, you know, express ourselves, have the freedom to do that and get credit for it, you know. So now it's really a focus on, you know, showing black culture through arts and uh, film and poetry. All of these pieces are amazing. So much emotion and storylines behind it. Can you show us some? Yeah, uh, so I'll walk you through these charcoal pieces that I have, which is <clears throat> very fun, very messy sometimes. But um, this one is a piece that I, I did a series of uh, black children that really highlights the emotions in, in children because they, they really get to grow and really express themselves, you know, in, in the black community. And this one right here is in a home. Yeah, this one here is a, a series that I did going into people's homes and really wanting to show black people at leisure, you know, because a lot of times we always feel this necessity to rip and run. And so this is just something that's leisurely and casual with um, this one shows my twin brother with his wife and kids, you know, really just um, enjoying a day. Showing family. Now, 
What does it mean to you to have it here at the college, this exhibit? So the college is perfect because, you know, you have growing minds here that, that really are inquisitive on, on things. And when you have art, something for people to walk up to and really soak up the, the things that's happening in a piece, you know. So I think it's great to be here with students. And we already saw some students asking you questions. So they can still catch up and they have tomorrow all the way until the 29th of this month to catch this, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. This is going to be up until the 29th. There's going to be a artist, artist talk tomorrow, uh, the 15th at 1215. So you can stop by and hear a little bit more explanation on the pieces. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining us. And we're going to have more coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Beautiful work there. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's go outside with live cam, 53 degrees, which uh, is fantastic because today is a rather dubious and frigid anniversary here in South Texas. Oh, yeah. You are right. We talked a little <laughs> bit about it yesterday, but today's kind of the day when things really started to set in. The yep. snow started to fall on the night of the 14th, and by the morning of the 15th, we got down to nine here in San Antonio. We all remember this very well. Perhaps we don't want to remember it. No, but, we don't. <laughs> uh, here's just a quick recap. And by the way, we're going to put out a story today on KSAT.com if you want to check it out. Uh, just looking back at this big event. This was video I took walking to work that morning. Uh, and it did, I, again, I've said this all along whenever I show this video, but it, it, I didn't believe that I was in San Antonio at this point. It felt like I was in Canada or something. Uh, with the snow and the wind, and it was uh, just wild. But yes, temperatures dropped down to nine. Wind chill values were below zero at this point. And we all remember the cascading effect of the cold and the power outages. And uh, it was not a great situation. And we were in the midst of COVID on top of all that. So that was back in 2021. We are now three years past that, still learning lessons from that event, uh, but not near as cold today. We've got cloud cover off to the west, it's trying to drift into San Antonio. So we had sunny skies earlier, and now that bank of clouds is working its way into town. You've got cloudy conditions, Hondo, Kerrville, up to Fredericksburg and Uvalde, and temperatures in the low 50s. We started off in the 40s this morning. Now, once these clouds move in, it's going to be hard for us to warm up all that much. I still think uh, we, we you know, get to, into the upper 50s near 60 today. Uh, a little bit warmer than that, but it's it's going to be sort of a cool day with these clouds hanging around. Uh, here's what I think for highs today, uh, jumping into the low 60s, perhaps 63 here in San Antonio, 64, uh, but low 60s for Ferrox Ranch, Bernie, and it's all going to be dependent on these clouds. And if we get some breaks, that'll help to warm us up at least a, a little bit, but uh, cooler today than it was yesterday. As we look outside again, you can see that cloud bank that has worked in over the airport. Temperatures 51, 52 New Braunfels, still 40s for Bernie and Kerrville. Here's the forecast. Uh, we'll keep the clouds going through the rest of today, and then tomorrow should be an overcast day. There could be a few breaks here and there, like today, uh, but more clouds than sun for sure. Now, as we get into Friday, here's when things start to change. This is 5 a.m. Friday morning. Showers begin to work in. And uh, it could be a wet commute Friday morning. That's certainly a possibility. This is mainly going to be light rain. There could be a few rumbles of thunder, but certainly not any severe weather or anything like that. And then these uh, showers will continue throughout the day on Friday, or at least through early afternoon before they start to push off to the east. And then things may quiet down a little bit Friday evening uh, going into Saturday. How much rain can we see? Now, here's the big question. And the models are kind of all over the place on where exactly this rain sets up. But it looks like we're going to have quite a gradient uh, to the point where if you're in the hill country, you may not see anything at all. If you're watching from San Antonio, morning order of a tenth of an inch, maybe up to a half an inch, especially southern Bear County. And then you go south, you run into some much bigger numbers, one to two inches of rain potentially from Catula, Laredo, over to Corpus Christi and some of our southern counties, places like Carrizo Springs, over to Cuero, can get some good rain out of this. But it's going to be a gradient where, uh, again, not everyone sees those good rainfall totals. Here's how I think rain chances play out. 40% Thursday night, 60% on Friday, especially first half of the day. And then by Friday night, those rain chances are starting to fall off. Uh, so the extended forecast, it will be colder behind a cold front that moves through early pre-dawn Saturday. So down to uh, 50 for a high with gusty winds. 
And then Sunday morning, uh, we're forecasting 33, but I think some outlying areas certainly could get down to breezing, uh, freezing briefly. Uh, if you have any uh, you know, outdoor plants, sensitive outdoor plants you need to bring in. And then it warms right back up start of next week. So uh, a lot going on there over the next three days. You want to check back with the KSAT weather app. We will, especially for the cold weekend coming up. Yeah, it's going to be chilly, especially on Saturday. Sunday won't be so bad. All right. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 921, 53 degrees. And coming up next, it's a new Valentine's Day edition of Science with Sarah. You can see Sarah there busy with the kiddos at Lamar Elementary. This is coming up after the break. Good morning. Welcome back. 924. Today must be a fun day at Lamar Elementary here in San Antonio because it's Valentine's Day and they're getting a visit from Sarah Spivey and David Sears. That's right. Plus, the San Antonio Zoo is also out there. Good morning, Sarah and David. Looks like fun out there. Good morning. Good morning. David has already been eating the candy hearts, of course. Uh, yeah. It'll be my all-time favorite so experiment. So we're doing two experiments today with these awesome kiddos at Lamar. The first one we're doing is deciding which substance uh, dissolves candy hearts faster. We've got water, we've got soda water, and yep, we've got <gasps> vinegar. Whoo! Uh, so these kids have made their hypothesis as to what is going to melt faster, and so far it looks like the soda so water is So if this is, is soda winning. water, then that tastes like a candy heart, right? With it a should, but, but okay. All right. That's the way to do it, I guess. <laughs> How does it taste? Not Don't drink it, guys. Don't do what David did. <laughs> okay. Not very All good. right. So here's how you make your catapult, David. You want to yes. start with two jumbo popsicle sticks that are notched like this, what and you want to. Oh, well, you ate it, I guess. Probably. <laughs> well, you want to tie them together at the notches with a rubber band. Right. This is what the final product looks like. So you're going to want five rubber bands. You're going to want 10 popsicle sticks. You're going to want to stack, I'll do this part for you, stack okay. these eight popsicle sticks together uh, and tie them together like this. And then you're going to want to shove one of those popsicle sticks shove it. underneath here. It creates a fulcrum. A who? A fulcrum. Ooh. That's a, a point of, uh, of contention contact. there. Contact. Yeah, contact. Okay, contact. then you're going to want to tie them together in the middle. Kind of like that. Um, and then. Okay. And look what I got. Yep. See how fast that yep, was? Yep, that was really quick. And then glue dot on there. And, um, and then glue dot. So, glue David, dot. I don't know. There's something over your shoulder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got the San Antonio Zoo here. Red and yellow. Oh, tell us a little bit about this snake, Emily. Yes. Yeah, so this is Suki. He's a Honduran milk snake. So I know a lot of people think that he's a coral snake because of the ones that we have here in Texas, but he's not venomous, he's not poisonous. That little riddle can be useful out in the wild, but it is not true for this guy. We just <laughs> thought he was very beautiful with his Valentine's Red, Day black, colors. Red, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and guess what? He's got those Valentine's Day colors yeah. as well. Now, he's a part of the Animal Ambassador program that you guys have at the zoo. What What is that all about? Yeah, so the Animal Ambassador team, that's what we are on. That is what he is a part of. And these are the animals that show that they had a lot of curiosity. They like being around people. They like going new places and doing things like that. So they got to be on the Animal Ambassador team. So they get to come out to schools like these all over the zoo, all over San Antonio, and be out, like animal ambassadors for their species out in the wild and let us be able to do some education and some really fun things like this. And in the hotter months in the summer, they get to kind of be uh, in a lot of ways, you know, the stars of the show. Exactly. Too, so yeah. It's always a great day to go to zoo, but especially when the animal ambassadors yeah. are there. So always. thank you so much. Yeah. He's so cute. And now these kids cute? have Wait, got. You called the snake cute. He's super cute. His face. His round face is gorgeous. He's so cute. I like him a lot. Hey, will he be my Valentine? I think he will. Okay, so uh, so the kids are going to make a hypothesis on whether candy hearts. Hot tamales, or what's the other candy? m and &Ms. ms will go farther. Let's see these candy hearts go far. Oh, coming up, we're going to test your hypothesis. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to Lamar Elementary School. These guys are going to test out their catapults. What did you think was going to go the farthest? M and M's. M and M's. And hot tamale. Hot tamale. Okay. All right. Who's got the M and M? You got the M and M. Fire away. All right. Three, two, one. Boom. Whoa. Okay. Fire off the hot tamale. The hot tamale. 
Other direction. Whoa, oh, that yeah. went straight up. Okay, okay three, two, one. Whoa, oh, almost oh. right here, friend. Three, two, oh, one. Oh. Awesome. Oh. You got a malfunction. Okay, Boom. you guys ready? What do you think will go farther? M&M. M&M? M&M. Okay. M&M. What has wait, wait, melted wait. the candy hearts wait, wait. more? Oh, that's awesome. What, what do you got going here? Okay. Huh? Ready? Three, two. Three, two, one. Look at all the hearts. Whoa! You got a lot of friends. That went pretty good, didn't it? I like that. What did you just fire up? Fire up a hot tamale real quick. Look it. What did you got? Huh? Fire yeah, up. go for it. Oh, I think this one's going to go hard. Supposed to shoot them, not eat them. Uh, I didn't eat it. Well, you got a hot tamale and an M&M in it. There you go. Okay. All go right. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got. An M&M. Whoa. Okay, I want you guys okay. to do this all at one time. How does that sound? All at once. You ready? Okay. Load up your candy. Ready Load up go. your candy. Here we go. Oh, Three, two, oh. one. Blast off! <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what is with the, the soda? What happened to the hearts in the soda? This one, it, it's kind of bubbling up, and then the hearts, some of the hearts are floating up. He sent that one yeah. all the way on the bottom. What is this Why one? Smell it? everyone name me? That smells, that smells like... Right, yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, got him and him. Everybody got him and him? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one, fire! So what did, right, did, were you surprised how far your candy went? Did I, you think it would go that far? You thought yeah. it would go that far? How about you? I mine went all the way there, all, all three there. of them. Did you think it would go that far? Yeah. So I there you go. Go. I the all right, here we go. Okay. Are you ready? I want yeah. you guys to aim your catapults at David. Okay. Aim your catapults at David. I'm ready. Okay. Fire away. Three. Other way. Three, two, one. Oh. Dang. Like Yours went so far. What was that? What candy was that? I, I used my M&M's because see, I knew it was going to go far because they're less in M&M's. Yeah. But, but um, there's heavy, but it's less heavier than, than uh, hot, hot tamales. tamales. Uh, so the hot tamale weighs more than the M&M's? Yeah. So that's why I thought it was All right, last there. table. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Table okay. All right, last you table. You can aim it at me. Okay, ready? Three, two, two one. Blast off! Let's see if David can catch it in his mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> was your hypothesis correct? Yeah, that's awesome. So what did you think? Were you right? Um... Yeah. <laughs> Did you think it would go that far? Huh? Did you think it would go that far? Yeah. All right. Wait, hot tamale. He, here's a sure sign of a good experiment. Look around us. We've got, we've made a mess here. It is what it is. Okay. What do you guys, what went farther? m and M's. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's see. Can I get, get Robert? Let's see. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, what did you think of this experiment? Fun? Okay, everyone, I want you to wave to your mom and dad and say, science, three, two, one, science! Happy Valentine's Day, everyone! Happy we Valentine's love science! Aww. We love science! What a great group of kids! Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sarah and David over at Lamar Elementary. Yeah, a lot of fun out there this morning. Uh, they had the zoo out there as well. So speaking of the zoo, here is the whooping crane exhibit. And uh, my eyesight's kind of bad. I don't see those guys out there, but maybe they're out Valentine's shopping this morning. But it is a pretty day for the zoo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, perhaps. And hey, I got to tell you, those kids there at Lamar Elementary, that puts a smile on your face. So too does this picture on our KSAC Connect. If you don't smile at this, then I don't, I don't know what <laughs> will make you smile. Uh, that is, uh, just says happy Valentine's Day. Uh, this is Viper the Pug, and he's in love with KSAC 12. Look at the smile. Viper, uh, we love you, man. Good shot. Thank you so much. Uh, and as we look at the pollen count, Molds are low, ash is low, mulberry is low, so nothing too much to worry about here. This is the second day in a row, by the way, that we do not have mountain cedar in the forecast. 
And we always say Valentine's Day is the unofficial end to cedar season. It looks like that is going to hold true this year. Uh, we do see some tree pollen, though, showing up. Forecast for today, 59 noontime, mostly cloudy. Uh, we'll make it up to about 63 today. There is a very small chance of a sprinkle or two later this afternoon, but we don't look for much. So your Valentine's uh, evening dinner plans look okay, just a little cool and cloudy. What about those rain chances uh, on Friday? We're going to look more at that and time it out for you here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Transguide right now. Got a couple of problems we want to point out. This one is northbound 35 here in the downtown area at Cesar Chavez. Two main lanes are blocked. Looks like it involves a large box truck. PD and Hero are out there right now. Then we've got big backups westbound 1604 around Northwest Military. It is backing up for quite a while. We don't see an accident out there, but it's possible this is just normal morning congestion. Plus, that is a construction zone out there in that part of the city. We also have another accident eastbound 410 at Callahan. Currently, one lane is blocked. And the Texas primary election happening on March 5th, and early voting is now less than a week away. One of the race's voters will have a close eye on is the Democratic primary for U.S. Senate. The winner there will face Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Max Massey sits down with the top two candidates in the race. Uh, and that I've served in Congress in a way that shows that you can bring folks together from all different walks of life. For me, everything kind of changed in Uvalde. And to those parents that are out there, in large part, that's what this pay, this race is about. These two Democrats duking it out. These are the two favorites of the nine people listed on the March 5th ballot. They're fighting to see who will take on Ted Cruz in November. I feel really strongly uh, that we can't afford six more years of Ted Cruz. Colin Allred is a former voting rights attorney. He currently serves in the United States House of Representatives. I think most folks go to work every single day uh, with folks who they disagree with. Uh, and they have to find a way to get to work and to actually get things done. And I think they expect the same from their elected officials. And Roland Gutierrez, he's an immigration attorney and a current Texas state senator. So far as, you know, electability and winning, the guy that got us closest was a guy named Beto O'Rourke. And he got us within two and a half percentage points, 250,000 votes. And he was a progressive, as am I. There are a lot of topics that Texans are concerned with, especially when it comes to the border. It's an issue that each Democrat has a different proposal for, which is a point of contention. I know that the border is in crisis and that our immigration system is broken. I've signed on and working on legislation with Veronica Escobar uh, called the Dignity Act. That's bipartisan. That's a comprehensive reform uh, that would secure our border. The Dignity Act is an extensive proposal that in part not only has various paths to citizenship, asylum reform and visa reform, but it also consists of more funding for border security, including a clause that states Requirements for CBB to construct and deploy enhanced barriers where it is most effective and beneficial to establishing an operational advantage at the border. Not this madness that they're talking about right now. Not their so-called Dignity Act, which I call the Indignity Act. It appears that one candidate is working to find middle ground. I don't think you have time for kind of theoretical ideas or for just grandstanding. You have to actually pass legislation that's going to help folks. But it is going to take a bipartisan approach to this, uh, and we have to bring folks together around this. And the other is championing his ideals for what he says his constituents envision. I think sure. I think you're going to find out whether we're electable or not. But Texans are going to get a different kind of candidate this November if I'm the nominee. They're going to get a different kind of candidate. One that cares, one that's all in with them, and one that's all heart. And I won't stop. Regardless of the differences, both candidates telling me they are fighting fair. They are optimistic, and no matter who wins the primary, they will support the primary winner come November. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And here are some important voting dates to keep in mind. Early voting for the March primary begins on Tuesday and will run until March 1st. Election Day is March 5th, and right now on KSAT.com, we have a full breakdown of everything you need to know, including where you can vote, when, and what's on the ballot. Got my new voter registration card in the mail just the other day. You're ready to go. Ready to go. 941, 55 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Well, have you already bought your Valentine flowers for today? Well, that bouquet may, may be from outside the U.S. So after the break, we're going to take a look at how flowers make it to your base. Welcome back. So love is in the air as we celebrate Valentine's Day. 
Historians say Valentine's Day started long ago when one patron saint, Saint Valentine, married couples in secret to prevent men from going to war. So people started writing letters and poems declaring their love and calling them Valentines. In this century, that means about 180 million cards are exchanged every year. Wow, that's got to <laughs> be a lot of money, right? Florists make nearly 2 million roses for the day, and the average person is expected to spend more than $100 on gifts and dates. Oh, <laughs> and another fun fact is that some of the flowers people will receive today probably made a long journey to get to those hands. Here's ABC's Daniel New with insight into a flower's journey. Happy Valentine's Day, darling. Love Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. It's always nice to hear whom your Valentine's Day flowers are from, but you don't always find out where. I'm going to Miami. Well, actually, if you're in the United States, there is a really, really good chance that they got here from South America via South Florida. According to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, 90% of the roses and flowers that come here for V-Day were transported through Miami International Airport. In a news conference this week, Avianca Airlines said that they transported about 460 million flowers this season from Ecuador and Colombia. They also stated that most roses and carnations come from Bogota or Quito, while hydrangeas and chrysanthemums were from Medellin. And when it comes to Valentine's Day, this process starts in mid-January, with hundreds of flights bringing flowers just cut that morning to Miami by the afternoon. Once in the airport, that's when the inspections begin, which can get a little PG-13. What they do is they open the boxes, they stack the flowers. Yes, these flowers get a little spanking for being bad and trying to bring unwanted hitchhikers into the country. If we let um, one insect that is not established or not known in the U.S. and we let them in, it's going to create an outbreak. According to the airport's port director, through February 8th, 1,100 pests have been intercepted while inspecting 75,000 boxes. Say what you want, but that is one efficient spanking. I can buy myself flowers. So if you receive flowers this Valentine's Day, just remember that your date loves you extra because that person might have gone all the way to another continent to get you that bouquet. Did someone say flowers? I mean, what a nice, totally intentional thing to do. And if you are wondering which is the second biggest flower holiday in the U.S., we now turn to our new floral correspondent, Freddie Mercury. Freddie, which holiday is it? It's Mother's Day. In New York for ABC News, I'm Danny New. Wow. Thank you, ABC. <laughs> I a, know. a very fun, creative package from our friends in New York. Yes. Uh, things I normally don't think about, you know, when, when giving or, or uh, you know, giving out flowers or receiving flowers. I had no idea. Right? I thought they were just grown locally, but. It's same. That's, uh, that's impressive. <laughs> they, they come a long way. Uh, yes, so if you're taking your significant other flowers today, it's not a, it's not a bad forecast for you. Uh, 51 degrees right now. We've got mostly cloudy skies. Notice we've got some blue skies starting to show up again. So these clouds are going to be there most of the day. There will be some breaks here and there. Uh, easterly winds around 5 miles per hour. Dew point on the rise at 44. Uh, let me show you the satellite picture. And there are our clouds. So there's a couple different layers here that you got to look at. So we're looking down from space, right? Uh, so we've got low-level moisture coming in. That's your lower cloud deck that we've got over top of us. And then over top of that, you've got a high-level deck that's coming in from the southwest. So those are the thin cirrus clouds. Multiple layers of clouds. That's the bottom line. That's why we're going to call it mostly cloudy today. Our forecast, noontime 59. Uh, they were up to 64 or so this afternoon. Cloudy skies by then, I think. Uh, there is a small chance for sprinkle or two tonight. But our rain chances, our significant rain chances, are going to hold off until Friday. Dew point trend, this kind of tells the story, I think. You know, dew points are going to rise to close to 60 by Thursday and Friday. So there's our rain chances. Front comes through early on Saturday, dew points drop off, and then they start to build back. Uh, this is a time of year when we get consistent fronts. So you start to see this kind of roller coaster action with the dew points. We're kind of back and forth. But in the current moment, uh, we're starting to see a lot more moisture, and that's resulting in these clouds. Uh, so the forecast for tomorrow, cloudy, 
Uh, not much rain though. There could be a sprinkle or two, but it's Friday where uh, we start to see uh, the showers start to uh, move back in and we have a pretty decent chance. I think during the day on Friday of seeing some rain. Now the bulk of it is going to be south of San Antonio, but we'll still get some rain here if it's uh, you know not terribly heavy. Uh, we're not going to obviously pick up a lot of rain, uh, but it will be in a form of drizzle and it just could be one of those events where it's kind of light rain most of the day. We just don't pick up a ton. Uh, down to the south, though, they could see uh, quite a bit more. And then we get a front coming through. Uh, that comes through by Saturday morning, and uh, then it turns windy and cooler on Saturday. Uh, so here's a look at the rainfall potential, and what you'll notice is there is a very tight gradient here between who sees rain and who does not. Uh, if you're watching from the Hill Country, do not expect much at all in the, in, as far as rainfall totals go. Here in San Antonio, we'll be right on the dividing line. Same for New Braunfels, Uvalde, Eagle Pass. And you go south of that, and the rainfall totals really do pick up. I think here in San Antonio, we're talking a quarter to half an inch. Uh, less than that in the Hill Country, and then south, we're talking one to two inches. Catula, Victoria, Cuero, down to Corpus Christi, and Laredo. Uh, areas that need rain, too. Uh, so yeah, we showed you the forecast and uh, the rainfall potential there, and here's the rain chances this week. Uh, Friday, 60% chance of rain. That's our highest odds uh, going forward. Extended forecast, 70 tomorrow, 63 on Friday, a little cooler with the rain around. Front comes through, it'll turn windy and cooler on Saturday, 50 for a high, uh, down to 33 Sunday morning. So some outlying areas could get down into the low 30s. Uh, a light freeze is possible, and then we uh, see some warming temperatures to start next week. Thank you, Justin. Well, we heart our spurs, and it's game day. They'll play in Dallas against the Mavericks tonight at 730 to close out the first leg of this year's rodeo road trip. Most of the team will rest up over the next few days while Wimby and Jeremy Sohan head to Indy for NBA All-Star Weekend. Good luck, guys. Yeah, go Spurs, go. Love you first. It's 952 and 55 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, we've seen uh, some progress out there northbound 35 at Cesar Chavez. The big truck, the box truck or semi that was there is gone. Uh, SAPD is still out there. We think they towed one other vehicle too. Hero truck has still got the arrow going right now. It looks like he's about to start picking up those cones and clear that ramp from 35 to I-10. Hey, do you remember that? commercial from the Super Bowl, the Dunkin' Donuts one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one where Ben Affleck debuts the Dunk King, showing J-Lo he's got what it takes to be a pop star too. Yeah, so take a look. Now you can score Affleck's, Matt Damon's, and Tom Brady's matching boy band look. Yeah, the coffee chain is selling the sweatpants and jacket for $60 each on shopduncan.com. That's cute. So the hot pink fuzzy bucket hat featured in the ad is also on sale for $40. But we just checked and the jacket and the pink hat are already sold wow. out. No! Yes. <laughs> you can still purchase the pants though and the tumbler from the Dunn Kings collection, but it looks like these items are going fast. Uh, this mm. uh, ad was the second most searched commercial of this year's <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> Bye, guys.